um, hello guys um, what I'm doing now is actually uh, doing a bit of revision because most of the topics uh, we have covered in the class already I'm just uh, we just look and see whether there are you know any topics that we need to uh, pay more attention to before you are ready for your final exam um, as you can see on the screen, I figure we still need to look closely into these three topics. Okay, first is the the one on assessment, you know, or testing, and the second one is on curriculum, syllabuses, and lesson plans. I think lesson plan and syllabus we have talked about this, you know, at length in the classroom. And uh, then I'll talk a little bit about the topics on learning resources and instructional media. What I would like you to do is, you can actually, uh, these are the topics uh, I have put and have explained in greater detail in the course book. So I would like you to look at the textbook as you listen to me. Uh, Here on the screen is the issue of language assessment or language testing evaluation. Uh, there are three principles um, we can look at when we talk about assessment. I will call this the PRV, as you can see on the screen. P means practicality. Uh, your assessment like your test or the task uh, that you ask them to work on should be practical shouldn't be too expensive or time consuming okay it should be affordable and practical this is like uh, the first principle the second one is that Okay, such assessment, uh, can it be a test of questionnaire or a battery of uh, tests, uh, must have validity. In other words, it should be valid. And there are actually three kinds of validity, the content validity, the face validity, and the theoretical uh, val validity, which I call the construct validity. Oh, I talk about the reliability. It should be uh, consistent or consistency. Consistent means no matter how many times, regardless of the number of times uh, that you assess, the result, the outcome should be consistent. Okay, so this is the PRV principle, practicality, reliability, and validity. It's on page 100. Okay. And this is the part on the meaning of language assessment. Uh, conceptualized as a way to measure students' learning of languages. A way to find out about the learning of the students. I'm having my coffee in the morning. And if you have read carefully, you will find out that um, there are actually three purposes of language assessment. As you can see on the screen, uh, the first one is on uh, the what we call the selection purposes, the administrative purposes. Like for example, if you want to recruit new employees, the government uh, authorities would like to, uh, you know, to hire uh, new government officers, they can use this. That's for what we call for administrative purposes. The second purpose is the one on 
instructional purposes. Uh, this is uh, for teaching. For example, when uh, I want to find out about your understanding of articles and how to use articles, I can decide a test and measure your ability so that I can know your shortcomings and then I can decide my instruction that can address your shortcomings. This is more like diagnostic purposes. So the first one for administrative purposes. The second one is for instructional purposes. And the third one often is for research purposes. Like you can compare uh, uh, the performance of the student before the intervention compare the mean with the performance of the same group of students right after a week long intervention for example this is very common in uh, graduate studies so just to wrap up there are three purposes and then number one for gatekeeping like for administrative purposes before you get into you know an airline business for example you need to have a high toy score not only that you need to demonstrate your all of fluency your writing skills and other capabilities we call this for selective purposes for instructional purposes we use the test um, to improve for learning and the third one is for uh, research purposes and you should also read the six types of taste starting from the placement taste diagnostic taste uh, achievement taste or the progress taste the um, achievement taste proficiency taste like toic tofel ielts and the aptitude taste okay right um so i would like you to pay uh, more attention to page 103 on the reliability of the test, validity of the test in particular. If you have any questions, you can post the questions on our Google Classroom. And here, when we go down into details a little bit on the the types of the uh, task you know you need uh, to uh, use a variety of tasks for the student to perform in order to determine their skills and levels of competencies uh, we can i think you're familiar with it you can use multiple choice like a b c d uh, you can ask them to transform a verb to a noun. We call this uh, transformation task, like a transformer, you know. <laughs> and gap filling, you know, you take out the uh, some words or expression, and you ask them to fill in the gap or do a bit of matching between uh, the keywords and the definitions. Or you can use cross test through four items. Even you can use. Um, open-ended questions who did what and where how why or you can underline the errors and you ask the students to correct those errors so these are commonly used types of tasks that you've seen i think i will not go into detail you can have a look at some examples we did that in the classroom uh, the example is very clear so please go through this i will then is on the another topic that you need to look into is the use of uh, learning resources. Nowadays we have online resources as well as uh, traditional resources. You can use virtual pictures. Uh, you can use you know fresh cars. And we use a lot when we go out, you know, it's, it's for outdoor purposes. Uh, especially with young learners, you can actually use them more effectively. 
you can use puppets for young learners. Uh, you can ask them to do role plays, you know, to perform something. You can ask them to sing a song. Uh, there are many YouTube videos that you can actually use. Or you can use good old uh, dictation techniques. And there are a varieties of dictation like dictal clause or picture dictation, so on and so forth. And I like dictation, but we haven't done this uh, good enough. So, well, if you have time, uh, you can use games, activity like spelling bee, bingo, things like that. Now moving on to the, now before I skip this, learning resources and media, these are important, they are important elements in ELT in general. And because of the AI technology and, you know, industrial 4.0, nowadays uh, AI is coming very fast and for actually rudimentary and basic teaching of vocabulary, grammar, spelling, and, and even writing, AI can perform, you know, very well. I mean, and it's just a matter of time before we have been made, you know, less important. So uh, as teacher, you need to develop your uh, what we call digital skills as well as uh, theoretical skills. Not only the English language, language, English language skills alone are not sufficient for you to work as an English teacher nowadays. And curriculums and syllabus. Uh, when we talk about a syllabus, we talk about an outline of a subject. Like you, you can look at our syllabus. I have the topics and the objectives, and also the you know evaluation. When we talk um, about a curriculum, we usually talk about the knowledge and the skills or the totality of the experience provided to the student, and the student are expected to experience and to learn. When we talk about curriculum, we talk about it maybe English language curriculum, the new curriculum, uh, business English curriculum, IBEC curriculum, um, you know, E major curriculum. We can even talk about national curriculums, school curriculums. For example, we need to revise our curriculum every four or five years. Okay, so you should be able to, when we talk about a syllabus, we talk about a plan, an outline of a plan at a subject level. So when we talk about a curriculum, we usually refer to a program level. So here I have an article on differences between syllabuses and curriculums. You can have a look and then sip through it okay and this and this is another one on lesson plans i think we uh, uh we did it many times so i will not go to that this is an example of a typical topics and the format of your lesson plan lesson planning is important because it's part of the OLE cycle remember the OLE o is the objective you need to have an objective and objective means actually planning now you need to plan you need to uh, gather enough information and you know devise a plan and put that into a written form if possible like the a lesson plan or a session plan and then the e means ex, uh, you know the, the l sorry l is learning okay and learning should uh, the the translation of the objective or the plan into the learning uh, activities and learning activities should be smooth and we should stick to the plan. It doesn't mean that we cannot do something new, but of course we can actually uh, every now and then provide the instructional experience based on the aim and objective that we set at the initial stage. And the, after the execution, 
you have to do the evaluation or the assessment and the assessment should address the aim and the objective and should correspond to the instructional activities provided to the student as I just mentioned earlier in this video there are actually three purposes of assessment one of which is for instructional purposes for improvement not only for gatekeeping purposes for the improvement we can use the results um, to actually uh, come up with a better plan so our result the assessment of the performance of the student the performance of the program the performance of the you know teaching of the instructor should feed into the planning stage of the next round so this is what we call the OLE principle this is similar to the PDCA PDCA is just a better is a more detailed OLE pattern or cycle so that's all that I would like to share with you uh, earlier this morning I've talked about the three more topics that you need to work on everything's written in the course book with examples and exercises most of which have been covered in the classroom already because the government has and it is a holiday on the fourth month next monday so i will be not uh, we will not meet but we will meet instead on tuesday uh november the 5th and six o'clock you know maybe it's 5 30 we will travel together to do a book english camp for a school uh, in the hospital so these are just the topic just in case i miss something you, know, you can leave your question or you can come and talk to me uh, or you can email me okay so i talk about the new the, these are the topic that we have covered the testing and assessment uh, curriculum syllabuses and lesson plan learning resources instructional media and so i hope you enjoy this thank you for your attention See you in my next video.